the Hesh, uh, it's hard for me to believe you come from 900 years of Hinduism. Correct. I was born in Kenya, Africa of Hindu parents and uh, could trace back my ancestry by name uh, about 900 years back. And the thing, amazing thing I said was that not one of them, as far as I know, knew the Lord as a savior. So, so how did you, how did you come to know the Messiah? I mean, as a Hindu from 900 years, uh, now they have this caste system. Or were you, what, what? I was in the Rajput caste, which, which is, is, Rajput means sons of kings. So it was the aristocratic caste. So and, uh, what was the first exposure you had? Well, this was around when I was 16 years old and there was a knock at our house and there was a lady who had been doing a missionary who was doing a program for children in that neighborhood and she ended up at my house because she was thirsty and wanted a drink of water. So I gave her a drink of water and she handed me a New Testament in English. And I love to read, so I thanked her and started reading. And I found, said that this is the most amazing book I've ever come across because he started talking back at me. It was as if the author was right there talking to me, standing by my side. And especially I was impressed by certain chapters like John 14, where the Lord says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. And now how does that differ from Hinduism? Well, of course, Hinduism, we believe there are so many different ways to God. And here is Jesus saying, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And that's interesting. A lot of what I see in America really has roots of Hinduism saying there's many ways to God. Correct. And so these words in the Bible kept coming to me. I would walk to school and they would like almost like haunt me around me. They were living. This Bible is alive, active, and full of power. So it's been breathed by the Holy Spirit. Now, I remember it, it was the battle inside me. I knew that Jesus was the Savior now. I was beginning to realize He is the, the way, the only way to the Father. But my traditions were struggling inside me. And I, though, so one night I said, I can't do this battle anymore. And I'm, I'm not going to read the Bible anymore. I'm not going to think about Jesus Why? Why anymore. would you give that up now that you, you begin to have a book that is alive? Then now you begin to realize Jesus is the Messiah. It's not these many, many gods. It's only one way. Well, how, there could, was a how, could you, how could you do that, Mahesh? Because my traditions and pride. I thought we Jewish fear. people had the corner on tradition. <laughs> tradition. Correct. <laughs> so we have our tradition and the traditions were and my relationship with my family. I knew that they would reject me. It so, would be so all right, you, you did what the Bible says. He counted the cost and he put the Bible away. But then he was surprised by God. What happened? I was knocked unconscious. Really? Right there. While I was reading the Bible, I said, I'm not going to think about this anymore. I'm, I, and then I was knocked unconscious. And my consciousness was taken to a place I'd never been before. There was the most beautiful light, like living rainbows all around me. W music and singing that put my entire being in pure ecstasy. And then I found that there were flowers and, and grass around me. The flowers seemed to be in joy singing. You, you were in heaven? Yeah. I, was, I saw around me there were streets of gold, and I knew. How does someone from 900 years of Hinduism, the top caste, end up like that, having an encounter? What, what did you do to deserve it? I don't know. I didn't deserve anything, except I was hungry to know more of God. And so the, the light... Now, God's so good. You put that aside. Come on now. You threw... You, you, <laughs> you, said, you, you counted the cost, said, no, no. Tell me, what else did you see? Then I saw this, the light that was the source of all these wonderful beings of light. It was living light. It was singing light. And my entire, all my being inside me, all my organs, it was singing in perfect, responding in harmony to this harmony of light and sound and joy and singing. And then this light came towards me. In that light, I saw the Lord Jesus. I knew it was him. And he had eyes that were the kindest, most compassionate, loving eyes, like as if he had suffered everything on earth 
any suffering people had, he had taken it himself. And yet out of his eyes shone perfect love and triumph and victory. And he came towards me, put his hands on my shoulder and said, my little brother. And many hours later, I, w I was knocked unconscious about nine, nine o'clock at night. And around five o'clock in the morning, I woke up. I heard the roosters <laughs> growing and I woke up and I was back. But I knew I'd been somewhere. And immediately I got on my knees and accepted the Lord Jesus as my savior. I knew there was no one else who loved me more than Jesus Christ. What were those lights singing to you? Do you remember any of the words? Yeah, it was like, it was love coming towards me. And the, the lights were singing and it was the song of the Lord saying, I love you, I love you, I've always loved you. I love you, I love you, I'll always love you. Will you look in the camera and will you sing that again? And when he sings that, I want you to experience the love of God. Do that right now. I love you, I love you, I'll always love you. I love you, I love you. I'll always love you. And you had a visitation from God. I, I, I wish it was every second, but tell me about that visitation, Bonnie. Well, it, um, we had, at that time, we had three small children. We were living in Fort Lauderdale. And Mahesh was uh, leading the National Day of Prayer and Fasting. And he was in D.C. and was, was holding this prayer meeting for uh, both houses of Congress. And I woke up in the middle of the night, and I thought that our oldest child, who was just a preschooler still, had gotten up out of bed and had turned on the lights in the house and was doing something I couldn't imagine. So I came out of my bedroom into the living room and I remember walking by the light switch and touching and they were all off and yet the house was illuminated. Uh, wait a second. Am I, <laughs> am I hearing her right? Every switch was off and the house was illuminated. Uh, were the lights on or was it another the illumination? The lights were off and it was the presence of the Lord. Wow. And uh, He is light. This person, Jesus, mm. is is the light of the world but he it, the the place the house had light in it and of course the moment i felt the off switches and yet the house was illuminated i immediately got on my knees and I just you know was in the presence of the lord and that was the beginning of a visitation that we had the lord came and and spoke to us spoke to me as he was speaking to mahesh in washington called our church on a corporate uh 21 day fast which i believe that was our first um, experience with a, a big crowd. What happened to the people there? L they were transformed. They were touched by the glory. Were there um, many people healed? There were, there were lots of people healed and in that particular visitation a real wave of cleansing washed through first. Cleansing and deliverance. Tell, well, go ahead. The wonder of it was that when, as we started fasting there was one time where there were a couple of hundred people and all of us instantly at one time as we were prostrate before God's presence saw the cross appear before us yeah it was like what did a, it look like like it, it, like something on CG it all suddenly of you just saw, materialized. Wait, 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 wait. All of you saw it at the same time. Yeah, right. we, we, we moved hmm. all the chairs and we were holding these meetings in a big hmm. circle kind of a thing. And there wasn't any official leader and prayer agenda. We literally just came together under the cloud of his presence that was so very real and we're just being soaked in his glory. And it was during one of those times that suddenly in there in the midst of the uh, sanctuary, we all saw simultaneously the cross and it was alive with the blood. It wasn't like Jesus was hanging on it, but the cross was living and uh, emphasized there was the living presence but of the you, blood. You can never be the same after uh, no, saying something no, like that. No. And we, we still are very close to a lot of folks who were 30, 35 years ago who are in that visitation. And well, well, let's us. speed things up now. Yes. About a year ago, you had a visitation from an angel. Tell me about that. That's right. That's what, again, Bonnie was in another city. I was at home and I felt like I was supposed to be, went to my study. 
suddenly, now this was, it wasn't a vision, it was like a, my eyes were open and suddenly a, an angel descended and his, he had armor, he was young looking, he was smiling and there was smoke of battle still with him. It was like he had just come from a battle, but he, he, the, his, the, he had just come and there was a victory on his face. And he looked at me and he said, How big is your chair? What does that mean? <laughs> I wondered, what does that mean? And then I asked the Lord, the Holy Spirit, some enlightenment. And he took me to Psalm 22. God is enthroned on the praises of Israel, or is enthroned on the praises of his people. And the chair meant the throne. And the, to the degree that we praise him, to that degree the enthronement of God will become practical in our lives. And as God is enthroned on our praises, then the, we are, any battle we are in, whether it's for healing, deliverance, or financial, the God wants to give us the victory the more we enthrone him. And so when Bonnie came home, she could sense the presence of God in the house. She said, what happened? What happened here? It was an angel. I, was I mean, a... in your house, I would have to believe there's a presence of God all the time, but there was something special. Absolutely, when I walked in the door, that sense of heaven, it's like the, the smell of rain, only it's a, it's a kind of thing that you're, you can feel that the atmosphere is alive in a little different way, and there's joy there. And that Steve typifies the presence of the Lord. Is dying. Days to live. Liver disease. And Mahesh and Bonnie find out about this. Now, I've heard of praying for someone. I've heard of laying hands on, on someone. Uh, but I have never, ever heard of what the two of you did. What happened with this young girl that was dying of liver disease, Mahesh? Well, her pastor and mother called me and said, they heard the, the Lord tell them, call the general. So they called me, they said, pray for this little girl. She's given up, they can't do, do liver transplant. It's too, you know, it's too getting happening too fast. Her liver is dead. Yes. Will you pray? And I said, sure, I did. And I got into the presence of the Lord. And I was in his presence for about 26 hours. Now, Bonnie, and were you praying along with yes, him? Yes, absolutely. And did you pray that length of time too? Yes, and you know, that's, that's one of the things about the Gloria, you recognize that it's the living presence of a person named Jesus, specifically in the emissary who is the Holy Spirit. And he's invisible, but that doesn't mean he's not tangible. Okay, so you knew something yeah. good happened. What so did you I, do? I called the mother and the, the, and the, and the pastor, friend, and the, the liver now was about normal. It was better than normal. You They'd been healed completely. How they could said, they explain? She was dying. That's right. And they said, we have nothing to do with it. And I knew what had happened <laughs> and I sensed and I, that's what I wanted to transmit to people and tell them that we can get in what I call the glory bubble. The bubble of his glory that yeah, as we have but, the Holy but, Spirit. But wait a second. I know about getting in the glory bubble, but what I don't know about is both of you went into that dying liver. Explain that to me. It is because of Jesus. And it was as if in those 26 hours, we went through every cell that had been poisoned in our liver. Now, both the, of you were experiencing this? And did you confer? Did you say we're both? No, because when you're in the presence of the Lord like that and he's working, everything, though it's very supernatural, everything, it seems normal. It seems natural. You're caught up where you be, your whole being is harmonizing with the reality of his being. And he is light, he is love, he is healing, he is joy, he is power. But it's natural. Like you say, it's supernatural. Yeah. It's natural to be supernatural. And this has happened again and again as we get in the bubble then it's like you are a steward of the atmosphere around you. You can't, you don't know to what degree, but that atmosphere may be five feet within you, what, but that's the presence of God, the Shekinah, because we are filled with the Holy Spirit, it should start emanating from us. It's all because of Jesus and what he has done on the cross. But we can be in his presence and therefore, 
You and I are supposed to be, and those watching us, are supposed to be ambassadors of the glory of God. But what was it like going into the cells in the spirit? I'm just trying to understand this. I felt like we, we were there and it was done. And the proof of the pudding was the healing of the liver. Okay. And when the Lord said it's done, it's a mystery to, to a degree. But the glory of God, that presence, was touching and changing the equation in every part of that little that young lady's liver. He was where there was death, life was coming. Okay. I can't get enough teaching. I can't get enough about the cross. I can't get enough teaching about the glory. And that's your specialty. Bonnie, would you teach for about a minute and look in this first camera and then Mahesh teach and then whatever God tells you to do, do. I think the first thing that I would say, Calvary changes everything. Calvary makes the difference. It's a supernatural, ongoing reality that there, just like there is no victory without battle, the cross demonstrates for you that God has made every supply for every human dilemma, for every sin, for every bit of suffering, for every unanswered question that you have. The cross in its complete work has made all provision for that. And it's like where there is radiation poisoning. Yeah, there is no human agency that can heal nuclear contamination, let's say. But sin is like that. We have been contaminated. But the amazing power of the cross, of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, loose the glory on earth so that it can decontaminate every person who calls on the name of the Lord. Whosoever shall call on the name of Jesus shall be delivered, will be decontaminated in a sense. And I saw that literally uh, said when my son was dying and they said he's dying of kidney failure and the golden light surrounded him. He was screaming in agony and suddenly he got connected with the glory of Calvary. And the Lord took away all that pain and recreated his kidneys. And now he's 30 years old healthy and strong because of Calvary and whoever all the people who are watching if they will exercise faith in the cross God's power and glory can come and heal and deliver pray for people right now right now the power of God is coming towards you as we are talking about Calvary the Lord is healing kidney disease I believe stage 4 cancer is being canceled there's a lady who has been struggling with breast cancer the Lord is touching you right now. And then the men, you're retired, but you have prostate cancer. The Lord is touching you right now. There are miracles for a baby that's in the hospital. And we just thank the Lord for miracles happening. There are several things. If you have been in a wheelchair, move your legs and see and get up. Because the glory right now from Calvary is emanating. And is changing the atmosphere around you. And healing is being released to the glory of Jesus Christ. God is healing hearts right now. Your blood pressure is normal. You're going to bypass the bypass. You're getting a new heart from heaven. Mash, have people gotten new hearts in your ministry? Absolutely. Absolutely. I like that. That, that, and Jesus said, it is finished. And I say, it is finished because of the cross and because of the glory.